gracious with your presence. I thought I'd stretch my legs. I've been stuck in the green room all day. At least you've got to sleep in your own bed most of it. Sorry about that. I am... I intrigue you, don't I? Yes, Mr. Belling. As both a director and a suspect. Lieutenant, I got what you want. Oh, thank God. And, uh, did you remember to pick out those clothes for Nikki Harris that I asked for? Nothing but blues and greens, just like you said. You trying to set some kind of trap for her? No, I'm trying to match her eyes. <laughs> Heads up! I'm tripping the saloon drop! Uh, excuse me. Lieutenant Frank Chaffee, homicide. Mind telling me who you are and how you got in here? Oh, as a member of the press, I'm exempt from your quarantine, Lieutenant. Dale Grady of the Boston Globe. After the review you gave Robin, but I can't imagine why you'd show your face here of all places. I'm as mystified as you. The show's producers called and asked me to pay a visit. That's right. Carmen Bernstein, Mr. Grady. You have our thanks for coming by, if not for your review. Listen, I tried my level best to say something good about your production. Praise the choreography, and that young woman who played the school mom, Miss Nikki, uh... Harris. Well, it's all history now. My condolences to the loss of your star and your show. You know, when you interviewed me last week, I told you we were going to Broadway no matter what you wrote about us. We're keeping Robin Hood open, and once we've ironed out the kinks, we're asking you to review it again, with Georgia Hendricks in the lead. Georgia Hendricks, your lyricist. Mm -hmm. She hasn't been in the show for years. That's some story. And yes, there is a precedent for reappraising the show with a new lead. All right, tell you what. I'll re-review your show. Tomorrow night. T tomorrow? It's the best I can do. And to be fair, keep in mind, not many shows can survive two bad reviews from the Globe in one week. Carmen, go tell the cast. We've got 24 hours to hold a week's worth of rehearsals. And if we fail, you'll live to regret it. Sydney, you're such a low life, you ought to be built closer to the ground. Oh, good day, Lieutenant. You just made it one, Miss Harris. Nikki, that dress goes very nicely with your eyes. Thank you. And I can't believe it, Mr. Darrow Grady. Am I allowed to offer my thanks for the kind words you wrote? Please don't understand, misunderstand, Miss Harris, but I try not to fraternize with the artists I review. But let me say, you did an outstanding job in what was otherwise a very misguided production. Mr. Grady, I thought your review of Robin Hood was needlessly cruel and way off the mark. Well, I'm not sure you know how to judge acting, Lieutenant. Oh, well, of course, you're the expert. However, I regret to inform you that I'm now placing you under arrest for the crime of murder. What? Have you lost your mind? Any statement you make can be used against you in a court of law. This is insane. What in God's name are you saying? I'm saying my best lines from Agatha Christie's Murder at the Vicarage. I played Chief Inspector Slack three summers ago for the Native Town Players. Oh. Did you think I was saying that for real? Oh, gosh, Mr. Grady, I'm not sure you know how to judge acting. You can go now. Come on, Grady, I'll walk through the door. Swell acting, Lieutenant. And not just on a community theater level. I mean, college. Oh, thank you. And how is your investigation coming along, if I may ask? I've been going over the show's production budgets, and you know, you were right. The, most of the cast is working for the same equity minimum. Not just newcomers like you and Bambi, but your stars as well. Look, this is no place to talk. Let's you and me get out of here for a little while. You won't let me leave. Damn. <laughs> you must clear the stage immediately. I've just been informed I have less time to reinvent this show than Moses had to cross the Red Sea. And he had God on his side. Hey, is this true? I'm getting reviewed tomorrow. Nikki, go fetch Bambi. I have no choice but to re-block in the same boat here and now. Oh, this I'm going to have to see. Why? You think something's going to happen? No, I just really like this number. Although... What? Oh, it's, it's nothing. What? Uh, my gosh, I can't believe I'm actually saying this and, and shoot me with my own gun if I'm out of line. What is it? I don't think simply changing the choreography is going to help. Uh, the song itself is kind of lackluster. It lacks... Luster. <laughs> Three women in the Arkansas River on a boat that's sinking fast, trying to get to the federal courthouse in Wichita before the farmers lose their land. Great stuff, it's your 11 o'clock number, but the music itself is kind of, I wonder, could we hear a bit of it? Sasha? Ladies, sing to the lieutenant, would you? Here you go, Chompy, just for you. <laughs> Sort of mild mannered. Straight.
a high breed. We need a completely new composition, one that's catchier than Pink Eye. <laughs> you want a hit? Yes, and not something from one of your failed shows either, Aaron. None of your Ina Kleiner trunk music. <laughs> Chris, if you expect me to come up with anything new, you'll have to find me some private time with my piano and my writing partner. Your writing partner is now my dancing partner and the star of the show. If she doesn't get the saloon number on the crowd tonight, we're all finished. And I need to see that very number in full dress regalia this instant. Johnny, tell the cast to change for the Act One finale from the final bars at the bar at the Bar B Bar Saloon. Say it again. I can't say that again. <laughs> Mr. Belling's rehearsal takes priority, so if anyone who needs to change costume, go right ahead. The rest of the cast, please proceed down to the green room where Detective O'Farrell will be fingerprinting the entire company. That is, unless one of you would be kind enough to explain why you committed murder. So, let's clear the stage and give our composer the solitude he needs. That should give you a few minutes alone with your piano, Mr. Fox. Alone, yeah. Must be quite a challenge having to create what your writing partner is. Otherwise engaged. May I ask, only because I've wondered my entire life, which would normally come first, the music or the lyric? Same question as the chicken or the egg. So it's the lyric. No. A great melody doesn't always need a lyric. Or a lyricist. Then, how would you start? Well, it can start with a note, which can become a phrase. And you start hanging words on each branch, like trimming a tree. Sounds easy enough. Really? Hm. Well, don't talk about love, or you'll have to say, fits like a glove, or as certain as push comes to shove. You'll pine for the woman you're constantly thinking of. You see the problem? Dangling participle. Uh, so, you suggest staying away from love at all costs. Uh, and don't mention your life. Or you'll have to say, cuts like a knife. Or refer to the heartbreak and strife. When you find that you're missing your. What? You were saying what you missed. Oh. She 